uh, Divan Manna. Um, he is uh, Divan is known for his soulful images uh, and is a pioneer among art photographers in India. He is one of the first exponents of conceptual photography with painting, body arts, and acting to create works that defy definition. Most of his work is about his journey in search of trying to come to terms with the insidious and unrecognized forms of uh, degradation of our sense sense of life and honor within ourselves as well as in others. He is not merely interested in presenting images of destruction of human goodness, courage and beauty, but tries to tap the unsuspected and as yet unrealized sources of tenderness, fortitude and humanity in us. Divan has won several uh, awards and his uh, works are in the collection of several museums and galleries and collections across the world. Good afternoon everybody. I hope uh, uh, it's audible and uh, visible it doesn't matter. Uh, as uh, I've only been introduced to you, uh, I'll give you a brief history of myself. I come from a very small town in Punjab very, very professional town and studied in a typical Punjabi medium school, government school where I used to carry my own tapat, they used to say Punjabi and small, small Delhi. Then as a child I was interested in doing Ram Leela. I was doing Ram Leela for a few years, playing the role of Ram before the wedding, which you call is Sita Swamvar. And after that I used to play Lakshman in the Ram Leela. I used to do theatre in the local uh, uh, school and uh, uh, the other uh, Amar Singh Rathaur, those kind of you know, uh, plays. Then I also used to indulge in a lot of sports, used to play kabaddi, hockey, cricket, volleyball, table tennis in those small schools. Like, uh, you know, once you're good at something, your teacher suggests you do everything. You, you are the one, you are the hero, you know, you everything. And I also used to indulge in a little bit of painting, poetry, and I had read a lot of literature. I was uh, fond of Punjabi literature, of course, because being a Punjabi. Then I also uh, wrote a whole lot of Dostoevsky and you know, Russian uh, literature. I used to play a lot. Uh, with, I was a sick child. As a child, uh, in my early primary school, I was very, very sick. So my father used to indulge a lot in me, he used to provide me a trunk full of toys. Mm -hmm. And I would rip them apart and take a canister of ghee and cut it out, make my own toy, since I could make my own machine. I would take the machine out of the toy and fit into that toy and roam around the village. And everybody thought, the you know, village kind of a psyche, that he'll become an engineer. So I was, uh, <laughs> and I used to be good at studies too, fortunately. And uh, uh, I was uh, sent to a college to study pre, uh, pre non medical Those days used to be like that. I failed miserably in all the subjects, except English. And then I failed once again. Then my brother thought he was as interested in art, so he took me to the College of Art Chandigarh, where I luckily got admission into painting. Then I moved to printmaking. So I completed my five years diploma in printmaking and graphics with the subject photography. Pardon? I completed my course in 82. And then, in the college itself, I, I joined the Film Society movement at that time in the you know, uh, mid-70s. Film Society movement in India was very, very active. And I was lucky to be the youngest member of the society, although I didn't qualify to become the member, because those films were all uncensored, which were being screened. And I, I saw the whole lot of the world cinema at that time, especially the European, uh, East European cinema, Istvan Raal, Istvan Savo, Sultan Fabri, Sultan Hazari, you know, and including Bergman, Kurosawa, Satyitre, all those, you know, I saw and I, I got greatly influenced by that. I wanted to become a cinematographer. You know, I wanted to become a kabaddi player, then a hockey player, then a cricket player, <laughs> then an engineer, then a painter, and then I was bad at painting. Then I took to you know, I'll become a cinematographer. Then my father fell ill, and uh, maybe the page is here, the pacing jaw, the, the famous dancer. And his, his uh, sister was married in Germany, and his uh, brother in law he was trying to help me uh, get into Germany to get. Uh, admission in cinematography because of my father being sick, I couldn't go to Germany, so I stuck to still photography and that's what I've been doing till today. 
I started with my first series, which I did uh, in 1980 when I was still a student of College of Art. And since I was reading a lot of literature and I was also uh, doing theatre, street theatre at that time. And I was influenced by the theory of alienation. As a villager, when I came to Chandigarh, as you all know, Chandigarh is a city which is totally, completely planned city by a famous uh, 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 architect called La Corbusier. And having come from a very chaotic kind of a life from a village into a very organized planned city, everybody at that time, uh, Chandigarh was also very young, people uh, used to be very, very you know, lonely, alone, segregated, and at the same time, they would try to feel Chandigarhians. They would like, if I speak Punjabi, somebody speaks Haryangi and another person, another language, they would try to speak, not their mother tongue, but some, something which was acceptable in Chandigarh. They would like to be what they were not. Now things have changed, people have started talking across, across the wall to each other. Earlier they used to be, you know, segregated and the alienation used to be quite, quite, you know, predominant. So this is the first series that you worked with. This, I, I, I studied this college of art. As we all see, that time, even now, sometimes there's a bench invariably planted outside the principal's office or somebody, some officer's office. And the peons, uh, unfortunately, we have to call them peons. There's no you know, other name which I could think of. They used to sit outside. They would sit together, but not be with each other at the same time. They would be lost in their own thoughts. So, this is one of the you know, child of one of the peons, who is now a full-fledged engineer, maybe uh, he must be having kids. At that time, he was hardly 10 year old in 1980. Yeah. Could we give uh, five seconds each? Sure. So is there anyone in the control room? No. Pardon? Uh, they are real and arranged. <laughs> 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 so there are peons who they used to live there, and the bench was there. I only directed them and helped <laughs> You can see a whole lot of you know, influence of theatre in my work, and I find uh, quite incapable of expressing myself through just one picture. So you'll find, find invariably all my series, uh, the pictures are in the shape of a series. Like, you know, uh, you have to kind of you know, listen to Alap in the beginning, and Dhire Dhire Bharat Bhotiya, Jod Jala, so that, that's the way you, you know, reach a crescendo in my kind of work, you you get to see the body of work. And this this work was shown in, uh, I think, Kamadu also there that year in Lille, in the Festival of France in India. So this was a part of uh, the uh, uh, photographers, uh, Lucian Harvey, a very great uh, French photographer, and uh, uh, Stéphane Couturier, a very well-known architect of photography. Is there anyone in the control room? You're putting all the lights up on the box, please. <laughs> Three, four years back, where a whole lot of Indian photographers, artists, even uh, Subodh Gupta, they were all there. Next one. Next one. This is a series which I started doing. This, this is a very you know, uh, special kind of work for which uh, I got a bit of recognition. And uh, since I had this painting background and acting, uh, I, I was asked to do an assignment for a magazine called Theatre Pinna, which never saw the light of the day. But uh, I was the chief photographer and they asked me to do a, a, a picture for the title. What I did was I requested one of my teachers, who was a very good painter, who still is a very good painter, called Viren Tanwa, and I 
took his painting and requested a person to act in front of the painting as a headless person. That series is not there, but later on, I, I did some more pictures with another uh, one of my teachers called Professor Raj Jain. Uh, his work, because his work was also related in some way to what was happening at that time in Punjab. It was very, very, very you know, difficult time that uh, we were going through. Can we get the picture? In the background, there is a painting painted by my teacher, uh, and in the front, there is a girl, and this girl is also a photographer, many must be knowing in Delhi, called Renuka Puri. She is working for Express now. At that time, she was a student of College of Art in Chandigarh. And this, this series uh, was a bit difficult because uh, some people might be interested in knowing. It was actually clicked on uh, transparency film, and then I put the film directly into the enlarger onto a normal photography paper. But as you know, like when, you, when you put uh, a transparency film into the enlarger, what you get is negative image. But I didn't want the whole of the image to, to look negative. I wanted some portions to look negative. So I painted the body. I painted the lips, say, green, so, so that they appear red. And I painted the face red. And, and the hair also, so that the hair don't, don't you know, become completely uh, you know, white. The, the, the colors of the painting are completely, you know, altered, complement colors. This was, uh, uh, at that time, you know, Punjab, Jammu and Kashmir, Herzegovina, Bosnia, Scotland, many, many places, there were, you know, there was a lot of turmoil, a lot of killing, lot of, and wherever there is violence, and uh, mostly violence takes place in underdeveloped, you know, countries, and those countries, Violence again is, is targeted, you know, against men. Men get killed, and women are left behind to suffer. I didn't want to, you know, uh, of course I do respect um, uh, photojournalism, journalist <coughs> photography, but I didn't want to, you know, project a very gory, um, you know, uh, violent kind of an image of war or destruction. I wanted some kind of you know, subtlety in the picture. So, and and, and in my family, my mother was. They were you know, five, six sisters, and they, they were like all of them were widows. And and then my you know maternal uncles were not there also. They, my mummies were also widows. So I've seen a lot of widows in the house who were either some some people committed suicide, some people were killed, some people died a natural death. But women, socially, emotionally, economically, you know, security point of view, they are left behind to suffer. That's why there's a predominance of women in in the series. This, this actress is, uh, she became a very famous actress after that. She was at that time doing uh, theater in the National School of Drama called uh, Navneet Nishan. Some of you must have seen that serial called Tara. <coughs> this is uh, another series with which, uh, because one of my maternal uncles, he was uh, you know, the serpent of a village, but he, his, he lost his wife early. And uh, then he became a kind of a sadhu or a tantric. He used to perform those tantric things, which the family was not very happy with. But uh, you know, he would tell me that one. I I know you know uh, stories of Teti Kaur Devta ki kariya mujhe aati hai. When he used to go to you know covers of Muslims would take the body out, maybe put surma in their eyes or you know. And there's something typical which he used to tell me. I don't know whether he did or not. I I don't trust at all. It is only the image. Uh, metaphorically, which I took from his story, he he said he would you know put a, a kind of a blanket, a case in Punjabi, which is called uh, around the well, would nail it all around and sit on that, and he would say that you know he would raise the water of the well uh, with his powers, or uh, if somebody's died, you know, unnatural death, and they say if somebody has achieved that kind of uh, you know power by sheer uh, practice. That person, which in that case my mama, my maternal uncle, was a person, that he would be able to bring that person to life for a few moments so that the family could talk to him. Then again, it's a story, it's a myth or it's whatever. And then he said, if, if that person doesn't have enough power, that that person could be consumed by the very you know, fire from which he was supposed to bring the body out. That's why I, it used to be called Sive Jagana. Sive, as you all know, is uh, the, 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 the place where you bury your dead. 
and Jadana is you know, waking. So one of my friends, he translated for me into English called Waking the Dead. That's why I titled the series as Waking the Dead. My basic purpose of creating the series was trying to you know, kind of uh, explore uh, various thought processes what go on in you know, all of us mind. And we are all, in a way, worried about death or you know, fascinated by death or death. So in some cultures, death is celebrated, there is a fear of death. But like, as children when we are born, we never think of death. You know, we are fearless, we are so innocent. Then gradually, the feeling or the notion of death you know, is instilled into your psyche. So I, I, these are various facets of death which I try to explore you know, visually in my pictures. <coughs> this is a very, you know, ethereal, translucent, transparent, you know, kind of an, uh, as the body evapor evaporates into, into nothingness. For this, I, I had to request uh, a lady from London. She's a British uh, actress and, 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 and an artist. And I, I took uh, the Partalka wood, white wood, white body of the woman, white blonde hair, and a white cloth on top so that there is nothing jarring in the picture. Various facets of death, like sometimes you feel you know, bundled, and, 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 and like you, know, you, have, you, you don't have any freedom to express. These birds are not real, they've been uh, made from fiberglass. In the Hindu mythology, we have that you know, the soul kind of flies. Some of these backgrounds I, I painted. This is, the, as they say in Punjabi, there is a saying, say, Balo Nikki Porsalat, means uh, there's a very narrow path you know, through which one's soul has to pass through. It's a very painful process. So it's a whole uh, big sheet of paper which is painted uh, underneath this, this actress. This is a continuity of the same series. Uh, it's again waking the dead kind of a thing, but like I titled it as uh, shows of the, shows of the unknown, but with a different actress. Yeah, you know, like I have this maybe almost uh, ten by fifteen feet, uh, you know, pieces of paper joined together, then I painted on that, and underneath there is uh, grass which has been sprayed with uh, with paints. <coughs> Some of these pictures are in the collection of the Museum of Asian Art Berlin because they gave me a show in 2000 when, when this museum opened after renovation. This picture, the, the, the male model is me because uh, uh, unfortunately when I was shooting, uh, I had uh, arranged for a male model and at the last moment, uh, my assistant comes to me, she was a girl, she said, sir, I can't come into the studio because uh, my mother has refused that you can't go in the studio because there are going to be female, you know, naked bodies. Then, uh, then I get another bad news, but my male model says that I, he can't uh, unclose in front of a woman. <laughs> so, I had to, <laughs> so I had nobody, I had to put my camera on the tripod to shoot and I had to 
I know, unclothed myself at the last moment. That's good news, no? <laughs> I don't know that after that, I got into the habit. <laughs> because I am preempting a question that some people ask, why, why yourself, you know? So that, that is the, the main reason. This is a series, see, uh, uh, since I've done these two series, one was related to you know, violence, another one related to death, and uh, then there was Iran and Iraq war going on, and things had happened in Afghanistan. Then a whole lot of, you know, when you, you see a whole lot of, at least that time, Indian media was not as strong, and we had BBC and CNN, and all those you know, Western uh, electronic media was showing uh, pictures of war all the time. You'll see, switch on, you'll see guns, blood, you know, bodies being you know, thrown or killed or carried. And I thought, like, you know, how, how long can we, you know, as an artist, uh, carry on showing pictures of death, destruction, you know, gory, bloody pictures. And when our children grow, looking at those pictures, what kind of human beings they will become, you know? Because what, what, we, what are we giving them? Life carries on. In spite of everything, life, life doesn't stop. There are you know, positive aspects to life also, and why not create something which is positive? That's why I created this series after the turmoil after that. These are you know, very tender, <coughs> intimate moments of love, care, care, getting together. In, in these pictures also the bodies are painted. And none of these pictures uh, is, is a Photoshop picture, they're real pictures. And some of the images I have planted here and there, like some leaves, which I found later on, they were not like enough. So I, I, I plucked with a, with a Photoshop tool from one corner, planted it somewhere else. And all, all the pictures you've seen till now, they are, they are on the negative. Not, not, none of these is on the digital. I didn't even know Photoshop. They didn't even have a computer, in fact. And all the pictures are on 35 mm negatives. This is a series which, which I'm continuing with. <coughs> I see self not as, as myself. Your self is you know, including your friends, including, including your family, the people you know. You become what you are because of others. You know? Otherwise, one is nothing. As you know, you know in Sufi poetry, there's a whole lot of uh, you know, emphasis on, on the ego, you know, how, how to kind of you know, get rid of the ego. I'm always concerned with uh, you know, people who, who are uh, you know, the working class. So this is a dhaba where I used to eat. So I'm showing only a few pictures you know, of each series. <coughs> I see a lot of you know rhythmical dance-like movement amongst people who are from the working class. In spite of all the worries and sufferings, you find a lot of joy, a lot of you know sense of uh, uh, celebration when they're working. Most of these Dhaba people, they, they, like, they wake up 4 o'clock in the morning and work till maybe 12 in the night in dark, dingy places. So that's why you find the pictures very, very dark. The walls are dark. So, so the metaphorically, you know, the darkness in their lives is shown uh, through the environment. This is a series of pictures which I clicked while traveling abroad. 
London too. We have a, a station in London called Hounslow East. It, it is uh, not the same way now. It's, it's clicked in 93. This is Oxford. This is India, of course, uh, doing it while it's in this misfit here. This, uh, many of you might recognize, this is an uh, installation by Boltanski, a famous uh, European you know, installation artist. This is a street in Jakarta, Indonesia, where there's a whole a row, a row of uh, uh, portrait makers, and they're kind of, you know, please, not so please, they Coca kind of places, but they're mostly out of job. This is a very uh, important picture. Uh, at that time, uh, Bamiyan Buddhas had been destroyed. 9-11 had happened. And I was in this place called Borobudur in Indonesia. Indonesia, as many would know, is uh, you know, the most populated, Muslim populated country. And mo most of them are Muslims there. So on this uh, shrine of Buddha, there are 84 you know, such uh, Buddha statues. And all of them are covered by those stupas. You know? Uh, in the background. Only one of these has been kept uh, open for, for the, so that people can have a look at that. But uh, since a whole lot of uh, the world community had started thinking negatively about the Muslims, uh, but look at these Muslim women you know, admiring or uh, whatever, uh, that the very Buddha statue had been uh, you know, destroyed. This is a, a, a roadside kitchen in Bali. If you see carefully, there is a chicken and there is a chopping board. And the chicken is looking towards the chopping board. But the chicken is red. And I didn't plant it there. <laughs> this is a show window in Jakarta. I did nothing to it at close as it is. You might find a, quite a lot of you know, variation in the work. Maybe some people might think, what is this? But as a photographer, since you have a camera, you, you can't stop. The continuity, you know, that our culture is as if it has been continuing for the th last thousands of years. You see you know, all those images at the back, and the pagli is in the back, pagli in the front, the, the color combination as if it's a you know, tradition frozen in time. All these images of Banaras, 2006-07 Shivaratri. Since I live in uh, Corbusier city, so I, I have been invited to many I know world forums to, to you know, show my work on Corbusier. So I, I clicked a lot of pictures of Corbusier and Corbusier. If you are familiar with his architecture, you'll find there's a lot of uh, you know, play of light, importance of light, of course, of volume and structures are there. But uh, he, he plays with light as, as if you know, he's creating poetry. He uses light or spaces in a very, very poetic manner. So my emphasis is not to capture the architectural, you know, uh, what you call mesmerizing images, but only some segments where you see the sheer poetry. This is one of the churches in a small place called Femini in France, where I was given a residency. A French photographer had come to India. I had gone there, so I went there almost five times. This was a church in, in it was incomplete. In 1965, it, the work was stopped. Then they restarted in 2005. So I try to capture these images. This this green space is actually a very narrow, small space, but uh, he uses uh, you know, the light in such a way. And this this kind of an you know, roshandan, uh, and the top of the roshandan is being painted green. And that top is, is the top of the uh, in French they call it église, the church. And those lights, what you see, they are not actually colored glasses. This is a narrow kind of a pipe kind of thing, not narrow, very huge. 
this on the top. So that it's been painted colored from inside. So the color what you see is not the colored glass, but the light falling on those natural colors. And what you see, the patterns on the right hand side corner, they are created by those you know, star-like holes. In the, in, the, in the building itself, he has you know, a large number of those holes, which create this you know, very musical, lyrical pattern. And it keeps keep changing the, with, the, with the movement of the sun. This church doesn't function like a normal church. There is no prayer which takes place there. There is no priest. It functions as, as a cultural center. This is another building by Corbusier uh, called uh, it's a monastery near uh, Lyon in France uh, called La Tourette. The, the friars are, you know, are trained there. There is one of the friars. It's a very enclosed kind of a space where these friars are not supposed to get in touch with the rest of the world. They are in fact not even allowed to look at the landscape. They, they can only look skywards. They, they, for, for their walk, there is a huge you know, terrace which has been created on top of the building, which has again more than six feet uh, high walls up all around. And this, are, this is one of the examples. This is a window and there is this concrete, you know, kind of a structure which has been created outside the window. They, they can look at the sky but they cannot look at people. This is um, the Chandigarh's uh, civil secretariat. This is the tallest building there and it serves as a secretariat for both the governments of Punjab and Haryana. And this, this I've titled as Corridors of Power. Because you know a lot of people from Punjab and Haryana come there to get their work done, but with the sheer size of the building and you know the, the massive uh, structure, they get overawed, overpowered. That's why you know I call them corridors of power. This series, uh, summer was there in uh, uh, in the, the French show there. In lead. This uh, is an image from another of his building uh, known as uh, Ronchon. I, I'm not you know, familiar with French pronunciation, so please forgive me, you know, those who know French. I could never pronounce it correct because uh, you know, when I had to travel to this, this place, it was uh, almost 700 miles and it took me almost 10 hours to you know, go in the car. and. Uh, this building is on the uh, French Swiss border, one of his most prominent buildings created in the early 50s, mid 50s. And this uh, is the candle, uh, and then as you see in the, usually in the church, and there is this, the wall behind is completely white. But I've taken the picture in such a manner so the wall becomes dark, uh, but uh, the color on the top I have added with Photoshop. From the candle, picked from the camp, candle and candle. These are some of the images of the work which I am now working on. These are pictures by uh, you know, dancer, Sufi dancers from Lahore called Malang. A very, very you know, energetic, powerful dance form where they almost go into a trance, but uh, very, very powerful. more on this kind of work because I'm quite fascinated by you know, various sides to one's personality. Thank you.
have a series here which, which, which goes by the title Conceptual uh, Self Portraits. Yeah. Uh, I would just like to understand uh, how do you distinct, I mean, when you call over conceptual, I mean, conceptual self portraits and say self portraits, how do you sort of distinguish between the two? I mean, what role does the word conceptual? Yeah. See, because, see, it's a sub, the word is by the way, honestly. See, I, I was doing this kind of work, I started this, this kind of work in 1983 when I was trying to explore you know, another way of uh, expressing myself through the you know, medium of photography uh, but uh, trying to do something entirely different which normal you know, photography tools could not do, you know, like something which is given, which is there, you click it and you maybe you know, click it in a very poetic uh, manner like Gurai does or many others, of the practitioners of the art who do, you know, documentary uh, photography. But uh, I want to do something else, you know, so add something else. And I did this kind of work. First time when I went to London uh, to show my work then uh, during this uh, South Asian Visual Arts Festival. And then people told me that what kind of work you're doing is conceptual. The word conceptual, you know, int was introduced to me that time. So since something which is, uh, you know, uh, not given, you know, something which which is, you know, developed as a concept in your mind first, as you know, putting what I'm also talking about. You know, there are things which keep coming to your mind. You keep thinking about them. I used to make small notes of them. Then the, maybe in five or six days, I'll create the whole series. Maybe after a couple of years or more. So it's basically a concept which is there in your mind which you want to translate visually uh, into a form. That's why I titled it as conceptual. Otherwise, uh, it is it, 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 these are portraits basically. You can call self portraits, portraits. But for me, uh, I never think because all artists, you know, throughout the history, they have been fascinated by the self. You know, to take take anybody, take Rembrandt, Van Gogh. You know, you take Picasso or even the recent uh, history, everybody you know, either clicks oneself or paints oneself or sculpts oneself. You know? But I, I didn't want to do it with my face. You know? I wanted to do it, uh, this is me, the way I look at this world. This is my portrait. That's all. So there's very little difference. You can see like the, the After the Turmoil series or the <coughs> self self portraits, they are in a way similar. Because these are, these are I know, my images. Uh, or my idea which I want to translate into individuals. Second part to the same question, I mean, uh, do you think, I mean, the idea of self-portraits, I'm just asking you because... By the way, I'm not an expert on self-portraits. No, so I, I, I may humble. No, I mean, uh, <laughs> I've, I've never actually attended a talk where someone has shown self-portraits. No, you're you free so to ask the question. If so I can answer, I'll try. The question is that do you think the idea of self-portraits in itself is uh, based on the idea of alienation, uh, somewhere. I mean, uh, because uh, why it is it is taking I think a little too far. It can be, but uh, see, self self has many manifestations. You know, so how can you uh, uh, can you say that uh, it is it is alienating? We are alienated in, in many ways. Yes, like a lot of people are there in this crowd. There must be some people who must be feeling completely alienated. But uh, on the face of it, it's not visible. In the self-portrait, also, if you, if you want to really, you know, include that aspect into it, it might be there at the subconscious level, but not, I think, very clearly. Yeah, one question: Are you going to go back to film now, since uh, you can do film? If you want it or not today, technology is there. See, when you grow older, film is such a difficult you know, medium where you need a lot of organizational skills, management, a lot of infrastructure and a nice team around you to work with and the stamina and of course the finances. Uh, so I, I, if, I, if I'm given an opportunity, I'll still do it. It's still there in my mind. But I am not feeling as enthusiastic and as passionate about it as I used to earlier. Yeah, no, the reason I'm saying is because, you know, you are so exposed as you grew up, uh, you know, music, painting, going to art school and all that, and your work is very, very personal. So uh, today technology is, you know, it doesn't mean that you have to go to a film school and get a MFA or something. Uh, you know, uh, it's much more easier to work with. So I really wonder if you, on, on personal front, if you want to do the creative aspect is at the you know, back 
of my mind at the moment. I, I, I'm, you know, becoming a medium in between the audience and uh, the creative people like yourself. So, but, but, definitely, given an opportunity or maybe the time I might. Come on, Stuart. I just wanted to ask you, you've faced a lot of criticism from the media, and you've been See, when it comes to my uh, the other kind of work which you saw, which is you know, arrange, manage, what we call you know conceptual, in, in that kind of work uh, there is no change because I still work on photo with the digital camera now, but I don't alter the images in Photoshop. But the things which I used to do in the dark room, like uh, it was a very very tedious process. Like sometimes one uh, picture would take two days to print because. Even you're printing from transparency. Transparency has uh, more layers, and those, because of those layers, it takes longer exposure. Sometimes the bulbs would fuse because, like I said, and I used to do a lot of burning and dodging. And with the burning and dodging, sometimes you you reach a particular area which you want, like you're giving say one particular area one hour of exposure, and there are 10, 20 different areas which need more exposure. So you, you can imagine one test print itself would require 10 hours of you know exposure. Then you come up with it and you see it's and in those days sometimes the larger used to be where you know the filters used to come one by one. You know? and then later on I had another larger way two other three filters you know would be there together. And that, that makes th things easier. Once you like click a, uh, sorry uh, make a test print with uh, changing filters, you don't know how much time you gave to blow filter, how much time do you give to the other filter unless you make you know very fastidious uh, notes of that. And, and that that used to be quite quite uh, frustrating. At the same time, quite uh, you know satisfactory uh, exercise also. But uh, uh, as far as Photoshop goes, there, there are many misconceptions. I think technology is always for good. I don't belong to that era where say oh, purani film hoti thi, badi badiya hoti thi, ye digital to kuch nahi hai. Film has its own importance. Like when television came into existence, video came into existence, people thought film will, will disappear. They both exist uh, in different shape, different form. All new, I think, technology has to be welcomed. We have to use it judiciously. How well we can use it depends upon us. And uh, some people can do it. I'm not against Photoshop at all, but when it comes to photojournalism, when it comes to documentary photography, of course, if there's big no you can't alter with the image. But when you're doing my kind of work or Pushpala's kind of work, when you do not claim that you are presenting the truth, a reality, <coughs> something which is a moment which has existed, then you can do anything. People do it with a brush. What does a painter do? Painter, uh, within the quotes, please don't misunderstand me, painting is the biggest lie. You know, because lie in a positive manner. So like you, you are creating something which is not there, which is there in your imagination. So similarly with Photoshop, you can do that. Um, I would, and uh, I think if I'm not wrong, uh, Manjunath Kamal is doing uh, this kind of work. Am I right? So it, it, I think it's, it's, but for me, personally, I find uh, digital much more easier because now I don't have to you know, spend five days in the dark room to get two prints. Now I sit on my computer, you know, transfer my work, and you can get a similar print, print after print, whatever number I decide, 5 or 6 or 10, but uh, in, in, in the dark room, I never used to get the second print the same as it was earlier. And the, the, the other print of it always be, you know, different. So that, that's uh, the way things uh, have become much more easy. I'm just apologizing, Stuart, for this question. Um, maybe it's because of uh, being from the UK where we're still concerned about race representation. But I was interested in your juxtaposition between you as the Asian male body and the white woman female body. And I was wondering whether that was something consciously you were commenting upon or why you chose the subjects that you chose and the way in which you actually constructed the, that series of pictures. Both the death series as well as the one where you're 
the subject with her. From our reading, from the UK, it's, it has different connotations. Can I answer? Yes, yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> I, I can't see her, so I didn't know whether the question's yeah. finished. I know I can, I can recognize her voice. I read it last night. Uh, <laughs> uh, see, um, honestly, I, I, I don't think like that. But see, like, there's, there is no religious, racial connotation to my work at all. Uh, uh, the white body was used by the sheer need to present the thought of death. Like sometimes you feel death is, you know, something which is very, very translucent. You know, very, you know something very, which evaporates into nothingness. So I want some very, very light feeling. That could have been created only by the white, by white body. See, the white bodies could be available in India also, but then you wouldn't have blonde hair. And then this girl was easily available, because she was an actor, she was a painter. <laughs> Professional. She, she worked for a fee, and I didn't have the kind of. <laughs> so, so, in my mind, uh, I have a <laughs> Because see, I, I don't really believe in to be uh, politically correct sometimes. I'm doing what I'm doing very consciously. Sometimes, what I've seen in Britain, you know, there's a lot of emphasis which is you know, on the written word. Sometimes you see a whole lot of set of words. Please forgive me for saying that. I'm not an art critic. I'm not a you know, photojournalist. And this is my personal feeling. In some countries, what is happening with emphasis is not in the, on the visual image. The image is on what is being written about it. Sometimes you read a whole lot of things. When you look at the image, wow, a child would take that picture. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I'm saying that with a very sense of responsibility, sometimes to reach that level of, you know, clicking a picture like a child, you need a Satyajit Ray, you need a Raghurai, you know. It's not easy to take that kind of a picture, to reach that kind of a level of simplicity where everybody thinks I can paint like that, I can click like that. But sometimes, there is a thought, like somebody who says, I, I can write a book, I am a picture writer. But then he employs a painter, he employs a photographer, he employs a filmmaker to do that. What is happening now is some people, they are usurping the space which was solely for you know, visual creative artists. Some people who are good at writing but not really very good at image creation. They are creating some images and creating a whole lot of stories and then you know, present them in galleries and there is a whole lot of you know, space available for them. That, that's what I really wanted to you know. Uh, say. But uh, uh, regarding your uh, uh, question, of course, my, my basic requirement was to have uh, a set of uh, things and people where I could create that image, where like even, even the you know, black hair or black eyebrows could, you know, could be jarring that image. Does it answer? Yeah, yeah, I take back my apology, by the way. So no, 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 no offences meant are taken. You know, I'm, I'm a very clear-hearted person. I, 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 I wouldn't take, I hope you also don't take any offences. Anybody? Brief question. No, just following from that question, did you paint your eyebrows as well? Yes, I did, I did. Painted even now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, were you ever influenced by Joan Michael that can you see it in? See, what happened, I had seen some, while I was studying in the College of Art, I don't remember the photographer's name, one of those sort of photography magazines, I saw somebody painting on photographs. That's what I had seen, that's all. And that time, like, you know, internet was not available and, you know, you could see films on, uh, on you know, video or something like that. I only saw the conceptual photographer's work when I first went to England and USA and uh, I haven't seen, I haven't heard this photographer's name but I did see like Cindy Sherman's work, I did see um, uh, Peter Joel Whitkins if somebody has seen that, then Sodek's work and uh, some other photographers. Then I came to know there is a whole lot of, you know, that, that's what gave me a lot of assurance of what, that, what I was doing was maybe right. Before that, I was thinking maybe, you know, I'm just, you know, fooling around, taking somebody's painting and painting my body and making a picture. Since I'm a bad painter, I'm doing something. But, you know, I, I, I couldn't become a painter, I couldn't become a cinematographer, so I you know, took, 
picked, picked up, up things from here and there and created something which is, I used to be really something very, very confident so pictures of what and luckily my pictures of what almost at the price of painting because many people you know, would say these are paintings. I, I find it uh, very, very funny. But an image is an image, whether it's a painting or a sculpture or a photograph. And the only difference is that a photograph or a you know, graphic print can have multiple prints. So its value goes down in terms of, you know, um, sadhis or those people who want to acquire very, very exclusive images. But uh, in terms of uh, you paint with your hands, you paint with the brush or the camera, it's really irrespective. Uh, an, an ultimate visual image is an image, uh, no matter how you created it. Thank you.